Hello and welcome back to our VPC videos. As always, I'm your host, Antonio. This video is going to kick off another brand new series from us that is going to be just a bit different from the other content that we produce. Instead of recommending games for you guys based off of a theme or some other game you like, we thought we'd give you a bit of a gaming education. So we named this series Gaming 101. In these videos, we're going to be tackling a different specific mechanic in board games such as worker placement or area control and break it down so you know what the phrase is referring to as well as go over some of the games that help make the mechanic a staple of modern board games. To kick things off, we thought we'd go with the mechanic that is just about everyone learns first, roll and move. People tend to associate this mechanic with children's games and for a good reason but it is a very popular in hobby board games that mix together multiple gaming mechanics to create a more robust and complicated game. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the very first game most of us learn as kids and our first incarnation of the roll and move mechanic. Candyland is about as basic as basic gets. In fact, despite the name of this video, in this game you don't even roll. You flip over a card from a deck. But the point is the same. You're making a randomized movement that is being decided by something other than you. Once you flip over the card, you'll see a color on it and you'll simply move to the next space with that color. Sometimes there are pictures on the card instead of colors and you must move to the closest picture to that, the closest picture that matches whether it is ahead or behind you. Pretty simple. But Candyland gives you a resolve phase as well. Once you land, you may find yourself on a licorice space, meaning you can't move next turn, or you'll find yourself at the start of a shortcut, meaning you get to skip part of the board. Side note, a fun little way to make this game a little more thinky for young kids, let them take the top three cards off the deck instead of one, and then choose which one they're gonna use. And there you have it, most people's first introduction to the roll and move mechanic. But as you may have guessed, this is far from the only roll and move game we play as a child. And next, we'll be looking at another classic. Shoots and Ladders is almost the same game as Candyland, really, but with a few differences that bring it closer to hobby games with the roll and move aspects. For starters, in this one, you actually roll die. This seems trivial, but the change means the player knows exactly what the possible outcomes are and has a better idea of what role they want adding a little tension to each turn. Furthermore, it expands the resolve phase of each turn so that they are much more common, bringing you closer to other roll and move games, such as Monopoly, where you have a resolve phase at the end of every turn. This also brings the, board game, or the game board itself to life and makes it almost like another player in the game that you're working against. Again, this aspect helps bring shoots and ladders closer to games like Fireball Island and Forbidden Island. Okay, now that we have the basics covered, let's kick things up a couple notches here and talk about Formula D. For those that don't know, Formula D is a racing game that is meant to simulate Formula One racing with lots of dice. How does it do this? Well, you see, in this game, you get to change gears in your car. Each gear has a different die associated with it. The higher the gear, the more size the die. As with any roll and move game, you roll it dictates how many spaces your car can move on your turn with various rules for changing lanes, passing other cars, and so on. However, just like in real racing, it's the corners that keep you from putting your pedal to the metal. Each corner, depending on how long and sharp it is, will require you to stop somewhere in that corner a certain number of times to simulate how your car would have to slow down. If you fail to stop the appropriate number of times in a corner because you stayed in too high of a gear and roll too high of a number, you take points of damage take too much damage and your car gets totaled. This adds a push your luck element to a basic mechanic, showing how roll and move can be easily integrated into a more complex game to make something new. In case you were wondering, Formula D is far from the only hobby board game to continue to use this basic mechanic. In fact, some of our favorite cafe games use roll and move as part of their gameplay games ranging from the classic Can't Stop to a more recent and heavy game such as the pirate racing game Jamaica, the zombie-infested Last Night on Earth, 
and even very heavy games, such as Talisman, that use it as one of many different mechanics to make up its gameplay. And there you have it. You just took your first step into a larger world of gaming knowledge. In this series, we will continue to explore mechanics that you find all over the place in modern board gaming. And hopefully, the next time you're in the cafe, you won't be so intimidated by our more hefty offerings. And if you're looking for any recommendations on great games that use Roll and Move, just click here and check out R5 and 5 on the subject. Well, that's it for our list and our video. Don't forget to leave us any questions, omissions, or grievances in the comments below. Or you're welcome to come down to the cafe and argue with us in person or try any of these great games. Thanks for watching, and as always, game on.